Hi, this is James Headley. Welcome back to the Living in Naples channel. Thanks so much for tuning in today. For those of you who have watched some of the other videos here on the channel, and for those of you that haven't, I certainly encourage you to do so. You'll find that I posted a lot of videos here helping you to identify where you might want to look for a home in Southwest Florida or not uh, look for a home in Southwest Florida as you're deciding on a potential relocation or second uh, home purchase. You know, what to be aware of as you look how to prepare to be the strongest buyer you can be, what the market conditions are like at any given moment, etc., etc. In today's episode, I'm going to suggest a range of things for you to consider doing when you aren't out there house hunting with me or a member of my team, hopefully. In other words, here are some Naples and Marco bucket list items that will also give you a sense of what your intended new home might have to offer you beyond the home itself. As always, I appreciate you liking, subscribing, and sharing. And with that, let's dive right in. There are just so many great things to do, see, and experience in Southwest Florida that any list like this is going to be incomplete. There are gonna be different clients, are also going to have very different interests and tastes. And depending upon the time of year, there are options that would move up or down on a list like this or be included or excluded. So with, you know, with that caveat in mind, um, I can provide you with a more tailored list before you visit because I'm gonna know you on a more personal level based upon our interactions in advance of you coming to have a look at homes in Naples, Marco Island area. But I think these seven attractions are a good starting point for exploring the breadth of what Naples and Marco have to offer. With that, let's start with number one, and that is the Naples Pier. Even if you aren't going to be a frequent beach goer, you absolutely should go to the pier to see what the beaches and golf have to offer, some spectacular vistas there, get a sense of the people you'll be seeing around town. You know, and my recommendation, go late in the day and take in one of those world famous Naples sunsets. You might even catch the elusive green flash. Number two on the list uh, is to go to Tin City or other uh, jumping off points, but go on a sunset cruise. Sunsets are a big deal in Southwest Florida. Even if you plan to take one in from the pier or one of the other venues on the list that I'll discuss, you book yourself a sunset cruise from Tin City or elsewhere. You know, the golf is such a wonderful resource and part of the draw of Naples and Marco. And a quick Google search, you know, it's likely to re reveal some nice guest discounts on these guided tours, as an aside, that depart each evening and provide you with an orientation to the nearby waterways, exclusive neighborhoods like Port Royal. Brings us to number three, Fifth Ave. Staying in the downtown Naples vicinity, take a drive or better yet a stroll up and down Fifth Avenue. And then you can meander down to the Gulf, actually just a few blocks from the end of the commercial district. And you, know, you guessed it, catch a sunset. I, with with high-end shopping and even occasionally some affordable shops thrown into the mix, fine dining and neighborhood sweets and treats, Fifth Ave is a hub of the Naples social scene where you can grab a meal that will rival anything you can find in Manhattan, Chicago, LA, etc. Even if all you're doing is, is a bit of window shopping and people watching, a trip to Fifth is an absolute must brings us to number four on the list, and that is Mercado. Now, moving away from the Gulf a bit, but not that far, the Mercado at the intersection of 41, Tamiami Trail, and Vanderbilt Beach Road, it's a commercial mecca offering everything from shopping at stores like Ulta, Nordstrom Rack, Southern Tides, to dining options from the Capitol Grill to Chipotle and everything in between. Throw in the dedicated bar and club scene, including a burned cigar bar, the ever popular and, and basically legendary locally Blue Martini, and numerous other places to enjoy a drink and the Mercado scene. Oh heck, uh, there's even a Silver Spot Cinema in the Mercado if you just want to relax and, and catch a flick while you're in town. That brings us to number five. That is the Marco Marriott, the JW Marriott on Marco Island. Uh, keeping with that more upscale vibe of Fifth and Mercado, make a stop at the JW Marriott on Marco, a part of your itinerary, even if you aren't staying at the hotel itself. Uh, it's situated right on the beach. Uh, you can grab a bite and, and or a drink at Tesoro, the fifth floor spot with golf views to die for. 
uh, or maybe you want to book some time at the hotel spa or perhaps Queens Beach Bar is more your speed. Great sunsets there as well, no surprise. There's even an adult arcade, 10K Alley, with small plates, craft beers, and small batch bourbons for you to unwind. So without even leaving the footprint of the hotel, there are a range of options and that's only a handful of them to consider. That brings us to number six, and that is making a trip to Goodland. For something decidedly less fancy than the last few options, head down to Goodland, especially if you're in the area on a Sunday during season when Stan's Idle Hour takes center stage. Expect live entertainment, bar food, grilled backyard fare, buckets of beer, boat drinks, and some of the best people watching that you will find anywhere. Where you're as likely to park next to a Bentley, a Harley, or a pickup truck in the lot at Stan's. This waterfront experience is worth the short drive from Naples or Marco. And the fun doesn't stop at Stan's as Paradise Found has become a regular go-to in the area and the Krabby Lady and Little Bar are institutions that are just a short walk away in this old Florida fishing village. And that brings us finally to number seven, and that's Celebration Park. You know, speaking of great cross-sections of humanity and a relaxed setting with good entertainment, Celebration Park is that is the last recommendation I have for you today. This is a permanent food truck park with some higher-end food truck fare ranging from Mexican to Greek to Indian to barbecue and other options. And it's anchored with a large tiki bar on a canal uh, where a lot of the festivities really get going. It may not sound like a real go-to spot, but trust me, it is definitely worth a stop at Celebration Park. Well, I hope this is helpful and perhaps a fun twist on the usual fare you find here on the channel. As always, I'm here anytime to help you with your real estate needs in Southwest Florida or elsewhere. Please do reach out to me directly anytime and I look forward to hearing from you. And in the meantime, thanks again for liking, subscribing, and sharing, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks again.